So what do you call yourself? Welcome. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. You're live streaming. Hi there. Hello. Good morning, sunshine. How are you? I'm good. It's nice to see a face. <laughs> Listen, likewise, and I know that it's super early. You have been on the grind, but girl, you have been busy. And I've got questions that need answers. So thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join me in the hot seat and on the tan line. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's like you're no stranger when it comes to the world of entertainment, when it comes down to inking stories and getting it on the screen and portraying all of these, these stories of lives, how did you know that you wanted to turn this from a passion into, um, I guess you could say, a career that has taken you on to be an Emmy Award winning filmmaker? I actually knew that I wanted to be a storyteller pretty early. Uh, my mom tells this funny story about how I uh, my dad was a college basketball coach. And so he was coaching at Villanova. And as a little girl, I would travel with the teams to all of their away games. And I would actually interview his players when I was like six and seven years old. And I would like Get ask some silly questions. Yeah, I'd be like, what did you have for breakfast today? Like, what's your mom's name? And I would I would go back and I would write these little books um, and I would call <laughs> each book the big trip. And so my mom was like, you were a storyteller even back then when you were six and seven. Um, but I've always been like a curious person, um, again, have basketball roots. And and so, I, you know, when I graduated college in 2009, um, I landed like what was then the dream job at ESPN. Um, right. And I worked up from there and, you know, just love telling the stories of athletes beyond the court, beyond the field. Um, it's my passion. And, you know, I want to keep doing it. <laughs> so. Right. I mean, you're doing a great job at it because here it is full circle from six to now, you know, we're streaming on Prime Video. We have Giannis, The Marvelous Journey. It's now available. Um, how did you know that you wanted to take that story? I mean, because you have so many people that's out and about paving their way and making these big waves. But when it came down to you say, OK, Giannis, let's do this. How did you know that this was the one? Yeah, I feel like you do your best work when you feel connected to the story and the subject. And um, I'm 100% Greek. So uh, both of my my parents, like all of my grandparents immigrated from Greece to America looking for a better life. And so that story okay. was told to me my entire childhood about, you know, coming from Greece and, and you know, searching for that, that thing in America, um, the right. American dream. And so when Giannis was first drafted in 2013, I was so enamored by his story and fascinated by what he was building with his family. And then fast forward, um, I leave ESPN. I get this job with um, Words and Pictures. It's a production studio in New York City. And the first day I'm on the job, they're like, we've been talking to Giannis and his team about potentially having him share our sto his story. Would you be interested in being involved in that? And so I was would like- I? <laughs> this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like, of course, um, yeah. it wasn't that easy. They, they then flew me to Athens to meet with Giannis in person and basically pitch him on why it was the right time for him to share the story. Okay. And how did that go? Is he like, like hey, listen, I'm, I'm more reserved than this or, I mean, because it's hard when people lives become others entertainment. It's hard to know what parts I want to share, what parts I want to leave on the cutting room floor, like the transparency there. Did you find it initially or did you two have to gel and then kind of figure it out? It was definitely a process. He was apprehensive and yeah. he kind of put me on the spot. I give him a lot of credit because you know, it was just him and I in a room. He was like, he told all of his agents, like, I, I can handle this. Like you can leave. And it was just him and I, and he was like, why should I do this right now? And I said to him, I was like, listen, you're 10 years into your career. You say you want to play 20. So you're at the halfway okay. mark. Isn't that such a wonderful place to kind of take a step back and reflect on the first part of the journey. And 
the first part of your journey is not even really a basketball story. It, it's an immigrant story. It's a family story. And I feel like a lot of people need to hear that right now. Like, it's so important, obviously. I don't want to get political, but like, it's so important for people to hear that story of this incredible family of undocumented immigrants that worked yeah. really hard and sacrificed and they achieved the unthinkable. And I think that's- and How has really that been for him? Thing. I mean, because that's a transition in itself beyond the pressures of being good enough to be on this team, you have to perform, but then there's this big culture shock and then you have to go for acceptance. You have to then say, okay, this is my new set of peers and I'm still expected to do different things. Yeah, it's really tough. His transition, he'll tell you like, and we explore, explore this in the movie, his transition coming to America in the beginning to play for the Bucks was really, really hard. Like everything was new to him total yeah. culture shock he told me he had never even heard of milwaukee before <laughs> he's I'm sorry. like i heard like, what <laughs> he's like yeah he's like i'd heard of new york city miami la he's like i didn't even know milwaukee. what that milwaukee existed he's like i had no idea um so i think that that acclimation was really really challenging especially because for the first 6 months his parents and his two younger brothers couldn't get visas um oh, wow. and so that okay. was a long process it's trying to there's trying to get like this isolation that's starting to kick in now so now the team has to become his new family because this is his new home and he's still working trying to be productive and get his people here too like oh wow it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot and i think that's why he feels such a sense of connection to the city of milwaukee and why he stayed there for for so long you know a lot of people thought he was going to leave and go to a bigger market earlier this year but he yeah. feels this sense of loyalty to that to that place because they embraced him when he was a nobody essentially that's good stuff and you know with this story Giannis the marvelous journey what is it that you and Giannis would like for the viewers to really just walk away with even if they're not avid basketball fans you know what is it that you want the average viewer to walk away with yeah I, I hope that people walk away saying wow I came in maybe thinking that was a basketball story but it was so much more than that um it's a story that has universal themes. It's it's about family that everyone can relate to. It's about fatherhood. It's about sacrifices that you make for your kids. Um, and it's about a sense of home and trying to find that idea of home. And sometimes you find home in really unlikely places. And I don't want to, you know, give away anything, but I think that people will take that from, from this is that when they walk away, their idea and perception of, of home, I think will be a little bit different. I love it. And it's safe to say that this is part one. I mean, because if you're so going to do this for 20, I mean, that. I'm just saying, or have you already started anything yet? Because I got questions that need answers and I want to see how this story plays all the way out. <laughs> well, we were, we had a big world premiere of the film at the all-star game this weekend. And Giannis said, nice. he goes, Kristen and I, we're going to, we're going to team up in 15 years when I retire to tell the second half of, of the marvelous journey. So good so stuff. You guys see? To that. <laughs> there it is it was already like a natural family reunion when you showed up so we had to clear the room and say look cuz how is it that we're going to get this done and why you know so it's good to know that he has that working relationship with you so I know we're going to get the inside scoop because my girl Kristen is in there asking all of the tough questions and making sure that we show Yana's in the best light and now it's streaming it's available on Prime Video and I want you to think of this as an extension of your office so as you're documenting and getting the next 10 15 20 25 30 years any other project that you're working on, you tell them that you need to jump in the hot seat, you know, on the tan line or get to New Orleans. And that way we could take the field trips and really follow and play by play. OK. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I would love that. And really quickly, um, I, I produced on the series Algiers America. I don't know if you if what? you saw it, but it's based in in New Orleans and it's on Hulu. So you got to check that one out. Too. Hold on a second, Kristen. I was sitting here waiting. I had my <clears throat> dramatic pause waiting and you did it without me. Next round, we're not having it, okay? Next round, I'm here for it. <laughs> that is awesome. It was the name wonderful, of it? wonderful. It's called Algiers America. And my my really, really good friend, Jackson Fager, was the filmmaker on that. He's brilliant. So you got to check that one out on Hulu. Absolutely. And of course, we're here for it. Giannis, The Marvelous Journey, now streaming, Prime Video. I know you got more work to do, so I'm going to let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you. But either way, get after it. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> thanks for having me this was so fun anytime thank you so much of course bye <laughs>